G'day guys, Riley from Nightlife Films here, and I thought I'd make a quick video about sharing a quick little process that I wanted to do for one of my cosplays. So, I have a Guts cosplay, a uh, Black Swordsman from Berserk. Um, we've got a picture of it over here, and we'll do a nice photo shoot with it soon. But there's some upgrades I want to do because I actually had a bit of an accident in that costume. The last time I wore it was at to Akacon, which was a recent convention that we had here in Brisbane. And I was walking down off stage when I don't know whether I stumbled over my own feet, whether I got caught in my own cape, but I had a bit of a tumble and I fell and I destroyed almost all of the lower leg armor of the costume and I had bits and pieces fly off and I had a bunch of other pieces break off with the costume that I thought were kind of important and nice little details. One of those uh, were the belt buckles. So the belt buckles I have, I had on the costume at the time, were just these. Uh, the, uh, they are fake, they are just resin 3D prints of a random buckle that I found online that I cut up and uh, made. And I put onto, bear with me one second, a piece of elastic that I also just airbrushed brown. So then when you put this on here, uh, from a distance it reads that you just have a full on strap that's connected and that way I don't have to fucking undo straps because the problem I have with this costume is that uh, it has, I think, 12 of these buckles, maybe even 14, because I need to add the upper plates as well of it. So <laughs> 12 of these, and they're all solid, and they don't flex. Well, that's a problem that I'm hopefully going to solve today. Um, I've been mucking around with a bunch of different methods on how to do this. Um, I made a mold of four of those, getting these resin prints uh, of just some random silicon I had lying around. And so my first thought, and most cost-effective thought, was to try foam clay. Literally just like beating up and stuffing it into the mold. I brush a little bit of alley powder inside it too, which is a, uh, a crushed up sort of like mineral that shines really bright and when you brush into it, a lot of the time when you pour stuff into it, which is what I'm also gonna try today and you'll see later. The problem I had when putting the foam clay into here is that uh, and you can probably see on the actual tin itself, it says it dries in air, or it's just like, what's it say? Uh, uh, let fully air dry in 48 hours. The problem is, if it's shoved into a mold, it's not really exposed into the air. And so I had another mold as well, and when I stuffed it into it, it was too far in and no air was getting to it, so it would just never set. So, it sounded like a good idea at the time, but just didn't quite work out. So, instead I have to go the more expensive route with more high-end, uh, flexible polyurethane casting materials. So, here's another test that I did, resin called F170, I think it was. Uh, yeah, F170. This, I think, I actually over-pigmented as well, so that's why it's kind of splitting a little bit. But as you can see, a little bit closer, it squishes. Ignore the, I think I have another one here that isn't completely bent, do I? Oh yeah, here we go. Oh no, I, <laughs> I just broke them all. I must have literally just did that. So yeah, um, I've got some new prints that I'm going to refinish. I'm going to make a new mold of one of these today of uh, eight of these, so I don't have to wait so long, because I think these have like an ambient cure time of at least like two to three days, up to seven days to, to be as fully solid. Um, so I don't want to have to wait all that time to pull these out of four, so if I have four of these I'd have to do, what, three times? Quick math? Yeah. So if I have the, the eight, I'll even have some spares, which if you're making things you always want spares, at least always make one, so if one breaks, you'll have that. So, with that long preamble uh, going, let's go get those uh, resin prints. Oh, you probably don't, you don't need to see, there's videos on how to finish resin prints and how to clean them and whatever. Um, so let's just skip to just having the bits and we'll show you what I'm going to use to mold make as well because I'm not going to use the silicon again. Alright, so I've got them all sanded and they're looking nice and pretty. Focus. So I'm just going to hit this with some good old primer filler. This is the shit I've been using for literally about five years. Uh, they're all pretty much the same. I just like kind of prefer this one and it's one of the cheaper sort of ones. Uh, just make sure you give it like a good can shake. Also wear a mask. Alright, so now that the primer filler is all dry, I'm just going to do a quick little wet sand with some 320 
uh, grit sandpaper because that's, in my opinion, that's all you really need. A lot of people like to work their way up uh, to their sand grit papers. I honestly just do one quick layer and I find that does the job a lot of the time. If you want that really high gloss finish, I'll show you a little trick on how I get around that as well. When I sand, I love to do a nice little circular motion as well. So that way you don't get any of those like hard grain streaks a lot of the time when you sand. So I'm just going to do it a lot over the main parts where it's more flat and you'll see. I also wet sand apparently the opposite way I think to a lot of people where they wet the actual sandpaper itself but I've always just been wetting the actual object and then sanding on top of that and I find that works just as well <laughs> to be honest. All right, now that seems to be pretty good, to be honest. I'm just gonna quickly grab... I always like to have just a brush, literally just dedicated for dusting, so I can just dust off the piece. And that is one very smooth buckle. Um, and I'm just gonna repeat this for the other eight. So, I got them all nice and smooth and they're looking pretty nice, but there is one more step to this because I cannot mold this because it will not work. And I learned this the hard way, unfortunately. So for whatever reason, a lot of 3D printer resins are reactive to silicon, meaning that they have some sort of additive in here, it's something to do with how it UV cures, that it won't fully set, specifically just around the piece. And you'd be left with like, when you pull it out of the mold, it'll be quite sticky and bubbly, and it just won't be a smooth casting. It'll just look like shit, and you have big waste of time and a loss of money. So you have to, add some sort of layer over that to stop it. You can do primer, but as you can see, I've kind of sanded some of that back so it has some of that exposed uh, uh, resin again. So, what I'm gonna be using is this stuff, crystal clear acrylic. So it's basically just like a clear coat, essentially, uh, except this just holds up a lot better, in my opinion. Um, some of the work I've done in the film industry, everyone basically uses this to seal uh, a lot of their sculptures and a lot of their 3D prints, especially, over the top. I'm going to do a couple coats of this, and specifically when this, uh, you'll have a nice little shine to your print. Alright, so now they're all dry, and you'll notice they have almost, well, I can't really pick it up on camera that hard, but it has like a sheen to it. Now, one other thing about the trick with the crystal acrylic is that this sheen, when you mold it, will actually transfer to your mold. So once I actually fully pull this out, you'll see what I mean. But now, I think this is the sort of layout that I want my mold to have. So the way that I like to build my walls is I just measure uh, about where I want. So if I have, you want about a centimeter clearance, I think for around everything, inside here is fine. The edges, I think probably want about a centimeter. So about 20 centimeters long by 10 centimeters. Perfect, and they aren't really that tall get away with one centimeter. There's plenty. So let's go cut those walls. So this is just some like, cheap nasty core flute that I have lying around. It is very thin so I could almost like bend it but I can actually use this to my benefit. Um, this is, you, I'd recommend getting like the, the thicker white core flute. Um, this is what I just used for my spray booth and the inside and just have a heap left over. So my other quick little tip that I love um, is that silver sharpies are great for this but they're a little bit harder to get, but this stands out so much more. This is just a paint pen you can get from Office Works, and specifically the violet. It comes up super bright and vibrant, so you can tell what the hell you're actually doing. All right, so let's measure. Alright, so I'm going to be moulding onto this tile here. And the reason why I love moulding on top of tiles is because it, it's basically a non-porous surface. Which is great because if you're trying to scrape things off, uh, if the glue doesn't seep inside it and doesn't make a bond. Which is why I'm going to also super glue all of my little buckles here directly to this tile because it will then make a nice flat surface. As you can see when I did the actual model itself, I made sure to keep it nice and flat so that way it is 
making full contact with the tile here, and that way when I also pour the silicon over the top of it, it doesn't have anywhere to be able to go underneath it and make it a lot harder to be able to take the actual silicon mold off it. Uh, it might just fully pop off and these might stay on the board, that's fine. I don't really care if these get wrecked, they're pretty easy to print. So yeah, I'm just going to dab some super glue around the perimeter. The other reason why I'm also gluing this to this tile is because if you don't, and you just have it sitting here loose, uh, when you pour the silicon, the stuff has a chance to move around. And if it moves while the silicon's setting, it's just not going to work at really at all. And it'll go all over the place, it might not set properly, you won't be clean, it'll just look like shit. You'll just have a, you'll just have a bad time, You're setting yourself up for a bad time. So now that we've got all these nice and attached to our board, we can start gluing up our uh, little foam board that we cut up. And then puts dust everywhere and then have to load away again. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've got all of our walls like attached to it now, what I'm going to do is just do a bead around the bottom edge. So that way we don't have any stray silicon that can leak out from it, making it a nice airtight thing. Make sure you go up around the walls as well. Alright, I am happy with that. Let's move on to getting the silicon ready. Alright, so I'm going to be running the mold in this stuff, Toughsil 28. It's a tin cure silicon, so it has a, uh, it's not a two-part, it's a, just got the catalyst. And I'm going to mix 400 grams, because you can do the good old like perimeter trick, but I want it to be slightly thicker. Um, this also has a recommended cat of 2.5%. So it is a little bit warmer today, so I might do 3% and this should cure pretty quickly. But before I pour it, I'm going to quickly put it into my vacuum chamber to get rid of the bubbles. And then we'll pour it um, and then you'll see me hopefully have a nice mold. I'm saying all this now because I'm going to have silicon sticky hands and I'm going to be running around the place and don't want to hold my phone. So I'll do that, probably won't record this part because it's on the floor, <laughs> but oh well, you'll see me pour it. Alright, so it's been a little over an hour and this is already set already just because of how hot and humid it is today. So, let's crack this open. A little trick I got shown recently as well by a co-worker is that if you are using hot glue on a surface like this, what you can do, just spray a little bit of isopropyl alcohol around the side, give it a sec, and it should help it pop right off. You can see it's already starting to mangle. Just like that. Bam! One flexible. I probably made that a bit too thick, so I put about an extra 70 grams in there. But yeah, I'm quite happy with that. All right, I'm gonna clean up the edges a little bit, and then we'll run it. So I'm sorry in advance for the lighting. I kind of just have to have the garage door open, so I always have this natural lighting in here. Which is great for when you're working, but horrible if you actually want to fucking film anything. So I'm going to be running uh, this mold in F170, if you can actually see it. Yeah, there we go. So it is a two-part fast set polyurethane. It's going to be flexible. Um, it's a 50 to 100 mix ratio. So I'm just going to mix up 75 grams and see how much that gives me, I guess. So I don't know if I recorded that, but I put 50 in there. Before I mix that as well, 
I'm going to brush in some aluminium powder. A couple of these. take literally just a drop of some come on I can even get it to drop bro please All right, I'll just dip it in there I'll use it to mix <laughs> week now since I uh, made this mold and poured all of the uh, the bubbles for it uh, just got busy uh, starting up work again and doing other projects and just having this in the background and being like oh don't take this out until you filmed it so let's just demold it these have more than like now since fully cured and I can just pop them and peel them straight out again I probably made this mold a bit too thick I didn't need to use nearly this much material but if it is this solid, that just means that when I lay it flat, like this, there's no chance of it buckling at all. If it was a bit thinner, then this might not be perfectly straight, and then you might just have a bit of wonky casting. So, I probably could have done maybe half this thickness and still gotten away with that, but nevertheless, that's why I'm using Tough Seal, the budget silicon, and not using something like Pinky, which is a lot more expensive. Um, if I did this in Pinky, this probably would have been... I don't know, maybe $30 worth of silicon, if that. Whereas with Tough Seal, this is maybe like, I don't know, 10 or 5 probably closer to $5, if that. And yeah, look at that. I have some nice, beautiful castings of completely squishy buckles. So the idea is this, I'm going to get some of this, which still has my old buckle on it still, which I'm going to fucking rip that off if I can well this is exactly why I'm I've made the flexible ones look at it they're just crumbling now I can just rip it off oh, you get the idea that way I can stick it on there and it can pull it can squish I can do squats I can do whatever I want I can crush it up in my hand and the buckle is still fine so I can glue these all over my costumes I can do whatever I want to do <laughs> and I don't have to worry about this buckling funny but yeah if you do want some of these buckles for yourself, um, I have the mold now and I can do some castings for these and I will sell these uh, on my Etsy now as well. I guess there will be a link to that in the description because I know not everyone is going to have access to this even though I did do a, just do a how-to video. If you want to see more of this sort of style of content, please let me know and I'll happily make more of these sorts of stuff because I'm doing weird things like this in my workshop all the time now. Uh, that's all from me. I'll catch you later. <laughs>